What's up, people? Welcome back to the channel. So, this right here is a video that I kind of been thinking about for a while. I got two videos pretty much like this, like that are planned. This is the first one that I want to throw out there. Like, to be honest, this is just like you know, like my first, my first go, just to kind of see if, if people are interested. So, if you are interested in like you know, in, like you know, in, in, in videos like this. Please let me know down in the comments below. Leave a, like you know, like leave a comment if you want me to cover another deck, or you know, like, like I said, leave a comment if you have ideas for me to improve this, or if this is something that you want to see. Because this is this something that you guys are very interested in. I would love to do more of this with. Like, if you guys like videos like this, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to do more videos like this. I would love to kind of you know like explore more different combos maybe do like a little bit different combo lines a little bit of more of idea on the whole theme of the deck but for like like like, like i said if you guys like what you see please feel free to like subscribe if not it is all cool we're trying to get to 500 subscribers once we get to 500 we are planning to do a giveaway you know we do you know i do a giveaway with tcg um gift cards i have a special tournament plan once like like once i get to 500 so please help us get to that goal without the way let's go ahead and get into the video this right here is an extremely special video that i've been wanting to make for a while i've been wanting to make a video where essentially i am doing a structure deck i don't know if this is going to be the intro i'm, I'm not 100 sure but right now i'm going to go over all the cards that i've decided to add in the structure deck so the other way let's go ahead and get into it all right to start this off we are going to go ahead and start with the main deck i have 40 cards in this main deck and then i have about six cards in the extra deck um like 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 like, like, like i said to be honest like, like like this is not this is not something that i'm 100 percent assuming konami is going to do this is a bit of a wish list because like i wish konami would like release more structure decks like i understand that they want to do their own themes and do their own thing so you know i'm, I'm not gonna say that you know i'm over the you know like that, like everything i'm saying should be you know taken for a fact but this is just my this is my personal opinion on kind of structure decks that i would like to see especially because there's like sometimes like we, we get structure decks and then it's like they're kind of you know, I, I don't know this would be really cool if konami kind of started doing this so let's go ahead and get into the main deck starting off with two copies of florandaries Rabina, yeah, it, like it said, I was contemplating on putting one copy of the of this card, but like to be honest, like my whole idea of, of this series is to create structure decks that, yeah, it, it, even though that like goes against Konami's policy, I know Konami likes to make money, they want you to buy three copies of things. I I, I want to create a structure deck where you could buy two copies and you 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 could essentially be good. So I'm gonna start off with two copies of Flanderies and Rabina. This is you know like this is one of the best right here. Like one of the best cards you want to start with. Second card is two copies of Flanderies Eaglin. This, like I said, you know, this right here is going to search most of your tribute summons. So, Flanderies Eaglin, that's, you know, kind of staple. Two copies of Flanderies and Stree. You know, like Stree, be able to recycle things for the graveyard. Sometimes, you know, like you might get with a hand trap. Sometimes things might get destroyed. Either way, good to, get, good to have Stree. Two copies of Flanderies and Toucan. Toucan, you know, like being able to recycle stuff from the banished, you know, you want to have Toucan. Toucan's a very good card. Two copies of Flanderies and Empen. Empen, one of the best cards in the deck. Super good floodgate. Very underrated. I want to say it's underrated. A lot of people do really, like respect the Empen, but at, at the same time, a lot of people don't like don't expect it. So sometimes they don't side deck for him, but still a very good card. And then two copies of Flanderies and Snow. Like, to be honest, I I, I want to make sure every single Flanderies card is incorporated, uh, like, while also kind of, like, uh, focusing on, like, you know, like, the meta way to play it. Because I do feel like sometimes, uh, sometimes Konami does release decks of, like, either archetypes that are already out or like you know or, or themes that are already out and sometimes they don't put the you know like the most competitive cards so like i do want to put my own kind of spin on it but at the same time i do want to make sure every single card is highlighted in this you know, you know structure deck video and then now kind of get into the more other stuff two copies of some more bird of protection for like you know like for, for those like for those who uh who like who don't know some more bird like like bird of protection is essentially an extra normal summon it also allows you oh well i mean it's an extra normal summon when you get the field spell and then it allows you to chain block 
when you uh, like if, if you open up with maybe only one floor on the reed only or only M pen. So it kind of gives you ability to kind of like keep extending and make sure you 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 know like like you have the ability to play around things or to extend through things. So I was you know like to be honest like having two copies of this was just kind of like you know 100% needed, especially because you need to add another copy of this when you resolve its effect. One barrier uh, statue of the of the torrent. I like I I was going back and forth, but I really did want to kind of incorporate more of like a modern meta like way of playing this deck. Like e even if this is not the most popular way, I want to incorporate different ways of playing the deck in the structure deck. So that way, like once you buy two or three copies, you you could kind of choose whether you like like which way you want to run this deck. So one barrier statue of this torrent is gonna make sense later on, but for those you know, for those who know, you know why this card is in here. So this is good because usually you, I believe it's off the normal summon of the M pen. It's just a regular normal summon, so you you could end on a lot of different things. So one barrier statue of the torrent, banisher of the radiance. One copy of banisher of the radiance. Some people might be confused. Why are you throwing this in here? Two reasons. One, sometimes Konami likes to just throw in like random cards and structure decks. That's that. Like, like maybe don't make sense, but kind of go with the theme of the structure deck. So this is that card that I, this is one of the cards I wanted to throw in. Banish of the Radiance is another card that you can normal summon off the M pen, and like it's it's, it's essentially it, it it helps you banish a lot of the cards in the in, in the Flanderies, um you know matchup like like they really want to be banished. So you know like a, any card that kind of helps that along, and also floodgates your opponent because like this right here, you normal summon this against tier. You like it's like in most cases it's somewhat of an auto win. So Banish of the Radiance would be a cool card that I, like it's a card that I think would be critical cool to find in a flaw and restructure deck. So I decided to throw it in there. One Rise of the Storm Monarch. A lot like I said, this is this is standard for you know any kind of flaw and Reese deck. You use this to like you know interrupt your opponent. You use this to like break your opponent's board. You use this to recycle your cards. You use it to clear your um to, to clear your graveyard to make sure you can resolve like you know other cards. So Rise of the Storm Monarch necessary in this deck. Miss Valley Apex Avion. This this right here is also very self-explanatory. It's uh, Omni Negate. It's you see, you know, like it's it's like very it's it's searchable in the deck, and it's like another one of those in, in like interruptions, and it's something that goes back to your hand to be able to use constantly. So having this in the structure deck is pretty much like a no-brainer. And then the last card, the last like tribute summon card is Samorgal Lord of the Storms. I was actually going back and forth between different Samorg monsters and. Like uh, like a part of me just wanted to put all the most broken cards I could think of, but at the same time, like no, I, I don't want to just shove it full of you know like like every other card is just like super banger. So I decided just to go and throw in some more Lord of the Storms. It is still a good card, but it you know it isn't like anything like anything crazy. Usually Konami throws in a lot of cards like it throws in certain cards into the structure decks that are like good for like I said good for the theme, but not like really like good for the meta. Some more Lord of the Storms is one of those cards, and then. For the for the last of the monsters, I decided to throw in two dimensional shifter. I was just gonna like I said, I was gonna just gonna put in one dimensional shifter and then like another hand trap. But then I started thinking about it, and it's like the whole purpose of this structure deck is to is basically like you you either need to get like like basically you could get one to come like like one to kind of like test out and then two to really compete. So then like you know, so I just decided just to throw like like two in there because if you just want to buy two copies to buy like a decent Flanderies deck, you would at least be able to have like sets of like some of the cards you need. So two dimensional shifter just because like 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 I said, just because like you know like if, if some young kid just wants to buy a quick deck and have a decent deck, dimensional shifter is where it's at. There's also a blow card against a lot of cards in the meta right now. So yeah, like I said, this this isn't like a structured deck to like you know bring down the value of Yu-Gi-Oh to reprint a lot of crazy stuff. It's more of like to have a product out there that's that, that that's good whether you buy one copy, two or three copies. It's a good product. So that's kind of the focus of what I'm trying to do here. Next card out. So now onto the spells, Flanderies and the Magnificent Map. One copy of Flanderies and the Magnificent Map is is just pretty you know it's pretty, pretty pretty like pretty standard. Like a, you, you can search it with M Pen. And like I, I guess I should have thrown like threw in two copies, but there's also like a lot of other cards that you that you'll see later on in, in you know in this you know in this build that I like to add. So one copy of Magnificent Map, one copy of Flanderies and the Advent Adventure. This card right here needed its reprint for the longest. It just recently got a reprint in in the Mega Pack. And to be honest, this is actually a card that I wouldn't mind kind of start like like picking up. Maybe I I, I might do a market watch talking about Flanderies. Because like a lot of cards were like were kind of up higher than I thought they would be. So one copy of Flan Reese and the Avid Avenger. Just you know, like, like I said, you want to have this card. You, you want to be able to cycle through to make sure you have the exact card you need for certain situations, or if you want to win in time.
And the next card is Flanderies and the Unexplored Winds. This right here is un very much self-explanatory. It, it lets you shuffle back any kind of Flanderies monster that you don't need. It also lets you, you know, like, 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 it lets you break your opponent's board and it lets you, you know, like, oh, like, like, e either break your opponent's board or interrupt your opponent because you're able to summon on, on your opponent's turn. And this right here could really help you out in breaking those boards, especially against monsters that are, are like unaffected by certain effects. One copy of Albers and the Land of, um, and the Sacred Land of Samorg. This right here is just a pair with your, it's just a uh, pair with uh, Samorg, the Bird of Perfection. That's right here is just, yeah, it's like, yeah, per, um, to pair with Samorg, Bird of Perfection, because essentially you need to search out a copy of this in order to get another copy of this to get, and this right here will get you an extra normal summon. And then this right here will, will help you chain block and also get extra fodder for later on. So then, so like this right here was just like a byproduct of having to run the Samorg package in the deck. For more, for, for more consistency, I decided to throw in Pot of Duality. Like, 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 like. To be honest, I was kind of going back and forth. Like, oh, should it be this? Should it be that? But I didn't want to incorporate like a really big, like you know, extra deck because like you know, Konami doesn't always kind of throw in stuff like that. And you know, all, all, like, like I said, also there's a lot of really good cards in here. So some of you might be like, oh, this is too broke. Konami never do this. I understand that, but this is more of like a wish list of what I wish Konami would do. So Pot of Duality, I've decided to throw in a Pot of Duality in here because that would really help the consistency of a deck like this. Another card I like to throw in is Pot of Prosperity. Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Prosperity has already got its reprint in the Reddit collection. So it, 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 it just makes sense for Konami, for Konami to sit there and say, we like this reprint, we want to do more of it. So Pot of Prosperity in a Florida Restructure deck would be awesome. Like it's just self-explanatory why you want to have this card in here. Triple Tactics Talent is a card that I think is desperately needed in a deck like Flanderies. Flanderies could lose to one single hand trap, you know, like depending on what it is or at what time they use it. And uh, like, 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 like I said, I would just 100% want to have a lot of different cards to either help me play around hand traps or help me play through hand traps. So Triple Tactics Talent is a card that I like to throw into the Flanderies structure deck 100%. Small World. So Small World, probably a lot of you might be like, like maybe not a lot of you, but some people might confuse why Small World should be a Flanderies structure deck. So the main reason why it's in here is simply because I want to have, where is it? Okay, yeah. Simply because I want to run Barrier Statue of the Torrent. I, I really think that this would be like a good way to kind of introduce newer Yu-Gi-Oh players to the nuance of Yu-Gi-Oh. Because I like, 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 I mean, like, to be honest, like, like a lot of times newer players come in and think that, oh, you've got, I'm going to run this deck and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to end with XYZ without realizing that sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh is just, you know, these kind of nuances to where it's like, oh. I'm gonna run, you know, I, I'm gonna play, you know, Flanderies, and yeah, even though Barrier, the, you know, Barrier, you know, Statue of the Storm Winds is banned, I could still do a Barrier Statue lock if I just incorporate Small World. So I, I, I think like running this engine, even though it's kind of very small, would kind of introduce newer players to the idea that sometimes in, in you know, sometimes certain decks could have these little small combos and interactions that could kind of break the game. And I think this is a game breaking interaction. Small World being able, you know, Small World being able to search out the bear statue of the torrent you know because you know because you pretty much have like the, the you know, like the the, the rabina and also the street are also waters so you're, you're pretty much able to use almost any card to bridge into it using small world so that's why i threw small world into this you know structure deck build i think i think that's actually really clutch and really cool book of eclipse is another card that i like to throw into this deck simply because like Playing around hand traps like Imperm and a Veiler is extremely important. So having a bit of Eclipse on, you know, on the, you know, like, like basically in hand could either break a board, play through a board, or play through a hand trap. Enemy controller kind of has the same thing to where going second to where if you're playing your birds, you could summon a bird and if they try to, you know, negate it. And if it's a card that, you know, if it's a card that has to target the face of card or needs to negate a monster that's, you know, on the field, you can use enemy controller to like tribute the monster and then take control of another monster or that monster. Like, like, like making sure that you making sure your monster resolves, but also, you know, ensuring that you get another monster to be able to tribute. Like, like when you need, when you get the monster that you're looking for. So enemy controller is a really cool card to have in the Flanderies deck. Book of Moon, kind of for the same thing. Ba base, ba like basically going second, being able to like turn off certain effects, get over certain monsters, and be able to play through hand traps. You know, pretty much be able to serve two effects. I think like having cards like this in a deck like this in, in a structure deck could really teach newer players like 
like I said, like like you use more than just like oh I negate to stop you. You know, like you you could also use stuff like Book of Moon to where if you're trying to use Imperm to stop something, you can book a moon you can book a moon certain cards to allow them to be able to resolve their effect even though you know even though they're trying to be negated by something like Imperm. So having you know having cards like Bill of Eclipse enemy controller book of moon in a deck in a structure deck like this would be very helpful for a lot of newer players another card i'd like to throw in is ultimate slayer ultimate slayer is going to make way more sense also pot pot of prosperity we know what will make more sense when i get into the extra deck of this of the structure deck but ultimate slayer i, I believe would like i believe would be a very nice reprint in in a structure deck like this and also like i said when, when you see when you see the extra deck it'll make a lot more sense Cosmic Cyclone I threw in here just has generic back row removal like you know like, like you know like you, you you have like the Ryza and then you also have the Apex Avion to negate things but it, it also wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to have some type of back row removal so I decided to throw in a Cosmic Cyclone and Dimensional Fissure is the last spell card that I'm throwing into this deck to be honest it is pretty self-explanatory why I want to have a Dimensional Fissure in a deck like this this is not only a blow card against the current meta but it also you know like like the Flandery's matchup doesn't matter, you know, doesn't care about having this up banished, and it kind of benefits from making sure everything gets banished. So having dimensional fissure, you know, like on the board to make sure your shifters will always be like active if you're sending monsters is extremely helpful. And then now to the traps, Flandery's and the and the Dreaming Town. This is probably like one of the best, the like probably one of the best Flandery's trap cards we have right now. And like you know, like it, it's just self-explanatory why, like why this card is in here. It's like it's one of the main cards you should for the M pen. You pretty much have it in order to be able to, to play on your opponent's turn to like be able to summon certain cards in certain situations. Having one copy is pretty much necessary. That's kind of how it goes in there. One copy of Flanderies and the Scary Seas. Like you know, like like I said, this is a Flanderies you know structure deck, so you want to have at least one copy of every single Flanderies card, even if it's not the best. But like to be honest, this card is extremely good. It's just that like in, in, in practice, you you pretty much need just you just need Dreaming Town and, and consistency, and Flanderies becomes an extremely good deck. So just one copy of Flanderies and the Scary Sea to kind of like you know be there. Macrocosmos, self-explanatory. Like like Flanderies, you know, does really good. You know, under banishing, it doesn't care if things get banished. And a lot of decks in the format, and a lot of decks that'll continue to come out, are not going to appreciate you know having things banished. So Macrocosmos in a structure deck like this right now is just self-explanatory. Dogmatic punishment. This is like like this is one of like this is one of the main trap cards that that are being ran with you know Flanderies. Pretty much like you know like. But also, like I said, if you if you see the extra deck, you'll understand why this is like really good. But once, like like you know, like it doesn't really matter what you put in your extra deck as long as you have like a variety of different things to be able to target stuff and have like good attack value with extra effects. Dogmatic punishment is a good card in this deck because this deck doesn't need an extra deck, and you can just send whatever you want to get yourself out of any situation that you could think about. And the last card in the main deck, which makes forty, is Harpy's Feather Storm. This is 100% self-explanatory, extremely powerful card that just got its reprint. It was it was pretty expensive at like four bucks for like it's like you know like like low rarity uh, common copy, but now like I think you get this for like one dollar. This is like a really good buy right now. If you if you get these out the market, I would just get these sooner rather than later. But to be honest, if a full restructure came out, 100% you would need Harpies for the Stormer here. It is a complete blowout against. 99.9% .9 of the meta a lot of decks really fear this card and if, and if you're gonna lose a structure deck of Flanderies You want to have feather storm on your side Okay, so that's it for the main deck So let's just go ahead and talk about the last portion of this deck, which is the extra deck there, there, there Obviously, there's no side deck because it, you know, it, it's supposed this is supposed to represent a Konami structure deck The structure deck is about 40 cards if there's anything you know that you think I missed, probably maybe terraforming would be a good thing to add. So probably you know like like let me know down below what card you would take out to add terraforming to this you know to this list. But I decided to kind of be more about you know having more cards to react to because you know like eventually the player is gonna realize that okay I'll take I, I don't like this card I'll put in a terraforming. So you know like terraforming is a very easy card to get. I was kind of concentrating more on like the idea on how to run the deck. So. If you have any ideas on what card I should take out to add terraforming, let me know in the comments down below. But let's go ahead and get into the extra deck. And to start off the extra deck, we're going to start off very strong with Garua Wings of Resonant Life. This is pretty self-explanatory. You have 
Ultimate Slayer and you have Dogmatic Punishment that could work with this card. It'll get you a draw when it gets sent to the graveyard and any monster with 1500 or less attack is going to be destroyed by Dogmatic Punishment. And then um, if you use it if you use it with um, Ultimate Slayer and to destroy a, a fusion monster, you'll get a draw. So this is completely self-explanatory on why it's in here. So this right here, I, I to be honest, it could have just been any fusion uh, pendulum monster. I kind of went back and forth on which one I wanted, but I really feel good about the monster I have right here in my it, like, I, that, I, that I have in my hand. So, uh, so I decided to go ahead and give the pendulum combination spot to the fusion, which is the Parametaphos Azotralis. Yeah, like I like I said, th this is just this is just for you to either use as fodder for. Um, for a uh, pot of prosperity or if, if you need to like take something out with 2500 or less attack with uh, dogmatic punishment this is the good target or if you need to use ultimate slayer to take out a fusion or a pendulum monster that right here will go ahead and take that out right there so that's it for the fusion and like combination pendulum and the next card we have right here is tri brigade Farajit, the bear you know the, the baron blossom this right here is pretty much just to get you another draw and to be able to take out link monsters and a monster that has 1600 or less attack with dogmatic punishment. That's all that is here for. The next card I have right here is Tri Brigade Shirag the Ominous Omen. This right here, if this card is sent to the graveyard, let's see, uh, you, uh, so right here, um, if this card is sent uh, to the graveyard, you can add one beast, beast warrior, or wing beast monster from your deck to your hand whose level is lesser or equal to the number of banished beasts beast warrior or wing beast monsters you control so uh, essentially like depending on the number of banished wing beast monsters you have if this card is sent to the graveyard you could add one you, you could add one monster whose level is equal or less than to that tier you know that you know that's that's a wing beast from your deck to your hand so essentially if you have dogmatic punishment or if you have dogmatic punishment you could send this card that has 3000 attack to destroy something you know that has 3000 or less attack on the field and then allow you to search your deck for a wing beast monster that you know like, like that that's level is less than the amount of wing beast monsters you have banished and since a lot of the cards in this deck are like level one you like like you 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 pretty much just need to have one banished wing beast to be able to set this card off to search almost anything in your deck on top of that it has 3000 attack so it's like a really good target for dogmatic punishment so this right here is a good target all around for a deck like this the next card we're going to talk about is Cyframe Lord Omega. This, the, like, like this essentially right here is uh, you know, like, like this right here is just like a, a generic target for for synchros. And then at the end, you can try to get one banish card. We like we return it to the graveyard. This card is, it, it, right here. This card is in your graveyard. You can try to get one card in either player's graveyard. Shuffle both that card and this card from the grave into the deck. So this right here could be like extremely useful not only to like get cards out of like your own graveyard to be able to use shifter. But like to get cards out of your opponent's graveyard that you don't want your opponent to activate later or you don't want your opponent to potentially revive if you know what they're trying to do. So Fry so Cypher Lord Omega has a lot of different kind of like ways to kind of pivot and a lot of different uses in a deck that has like that Manica Punishment, you know, and uh, you know, and Ultimate Slayer. So this right here is a really cool of it and really cool option to have in a structure deck. And the last synchro is Wing Pegasus at Ignister. This right here is like right like is like pretty simple. You you're, you're trying to take out uh, synchro monsters with it, and then right here it, it has an effect where you can banish uh, if this card on the field or in the grave. If this card is on the field or in the graveyard, you can banish this card. Then try to one card your opponent controls, shuffle into the deck. You can only uh, use this card like like you know effect of uh, wing pegasus once per turn. Oh wait. Uh, Oh okay, man, I missed the line. If another card you control is destroyed by a battle or your opponent's card effect while this card is in the field of the graveyard, so if if a card is if a card is destroyed by a battle or card effect while it's in the while this is in the graveyard, you you can banish it and then target a card in the field and shuffle it back to the hand. So if you so if you're just trying to you know get rid of a monster with 2300 less less attack with dynamic punishment or using this as you know cost for um ultimate slayer, this right here just has a lot of use. Catch a lot of people off guard. Just something extra to throw in. Two more cards to go. Uh, this this name really kills me. Mario Lo Logic Aggregator. We're just gonna leave it at that. This right here is like it's probably like one of the best things to use. Like you know, like if, if you're trying to, you know, like for um, for X Y Z like targets when you're using Ultimate Slayer. That's why I threw it in here. It's, it's also pretty high attack. Has 2600 attack. So if you're using Dynamic Punishment, is you know it's good. It's good for that. 
And then like, a, 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 like a, essentially the reason why I wanted to have this card in here is for the last line right here. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you could target one face of card on the field and the gate's effect until the end of this turn. So essentially, if you use this as a, as a Dogmatic Punishment target or Ultimate Slayer target, it'll allow you to negate the effect of a face up card, you know, you know, the target one face up card on the field. Yeah, I was about to say monster. One face up card on the field. So it has a lot of, so it, it, it could not just, it doesn't just negate monster effects, it'll negate card effects in general. So if you want to stop a Riddick Fountain, you want to stop like a face up, you know, trap, you know, or a face up continuous spell, this right here can get you out of those jams. So like, you know, depending on how you use it, could really shut down certain decks. And the last card I want to throw in there was a totally awesome. Let me know in the comments below if there's something else that you would probably want to replace this with. There, there's a couple of things that kind of went back and forth, but I decided to just go ahead and throw in a totally awesome because it because like I was also thinking like you want to have you, you want to have targets for prosperity. Not everything could just be like a uh, a, a punishment or ultimate slayer target. So I was thinking like if if you if if you get you know punishment and uh, and ultimate slayer before you get pot of prosperity, you'd essentially send totally awesome. You know, if, if you're trying to get rid of an XYZ or a monster with 2200 or less attack and then be able to put it back into the extra deck so that way you could use it as cost for a pot of prosperity. I was kind of thinking of making the, making sure this deck was like, you know, be able to work like, like with itself. So that's pretty much it for the deck itself. Let me know down in the comments below if you think that you would change anything or maybe you think it's good. Like, like you know, like maybe, uh, you know, like, like maybe you think that oh, I would change it up. If you think it's bad, let me know down, you know, let me know in the comments down below. It's all good. Peace out, guys. Catch you in the next one.